guys, Chris and Martha here. Chris is going to tell you a little story about our leaf springs on our previous travel trailer and the importance of not overstuffing your trailer. Yeah, we could call this video Stupid Hurts or Don't Be That Guy. In both cases, yeah, I was stupid and that guy. So where this all began was when we left Alaska. So Martha and I uh, moved from Alaska down to Southern California for my job. I gave Martha the uh, carte blanche to load the trailer with everything you need for the next four months. Yeah, that's where stupid hurts. And that's not Martha's fault, that's me. My ignorance of owning a brand new trailer and not knowing enough about it, I didn't think about the weight I didn't think much about other than the fact that if it fit in storage, it's probably good to go. Send it, right? Not so much. Martha loaded it up and it looked great. It was put away neatly. I didn't think about weighing the trailer. I didn't realize how much stuff she had in the trailer. I found all this out when we got to California. Luckily, everything went good on our drive down. No problems. We unload the trailer at our new rental in Southern California and it was the equivalent of 10 pounds of crap in a five pound bag. No way around it. She did a fantastic job <laughs> of stocking our trailer with everything we would need for the next four months. We thought we got away with it, moved it, and life was good. Went on adventures for the next year in Southern California. No problems, no concerns. Again, ignorant me did not do enough checking. I didn't stick my head in between the axles and look at the leaf springs. I didn't pay much attention to the leaf springs. The tires were in the right place. The trailer looked level. Good to go. No problems. Well, I can tell you firsthand, when you load your trailer, pay attention to the weight. Take the time. Go get it weighed. The cat scales, all the truck stops pretty much, they have scales. Figure out where you're at. Figure out what your axle capacities are. Figure out what your weights are and make sure you get your trailer weighed. So as we go along on this little journey, um, I warn you this is prior to Venturesome Couple and it was just a travel that Martha and I were doing from California when we had moved down there, moving back to Alaska. So we are heading back to Alaska. Things are loaded back in the trailer. This time I've had a year to pull my head out of my uh, derriere and learn that you really have to pay attention to your axle weights. You really do need to know how much you load in your trailer. Um, our trailer was a North Trail 25 LRSS. It was a 2019 model. It had about a 1,200 pound cargo capacity. And when we went to load up to go back to Alaska, I went over to the cat truck scale and I weighed it and we came in about 200 pounds underweight. We were good. Everything was going good. We jump in the trailer, we jump in the truck, we drive north and we're heading back to Alaska. About Washington time frame, I hit a bump or what I thought was a bump on a roundabout. Felt like the suspension hit a pothole. Again, ignorant, didn't think about it, didn't even bother to jump out and take a look at what happened. Well, this roundabout, we found out fast forwarding that that actually wasn't a pothole that's where we had broke our suspension. So the going around the roundabout had put enough torque on the leaf springs that it had broke it. So when we pulled in about 15 miles later, we pulled into the KOA. I do my walk around. That's when I figured out that I had broke a leaf spring. Three out of four leaf springs were broke. The only thing holding the trailer in place was the fact that the rear axles, when they broke, when the leaf springs broke, the rear axle actually tucked up into the suspension and had sat the leaf spring hangers on the main frame of the trailer. The tires were 14 inch tires, so they were small enough that the tires actually fed up under the housing of the wheel well. And you'll see in the pictures that the tires were actually rubbing the bottom of what is the trailer. Luckily for us, the tires didn't blow and the trailer's 
axles did not completely separate because the front hanger on both axles were still in place. Although, as I mentioned, one of them was down to one spring. And if that would have went or our tires would have blown, we would have had an absolute catastrophic failure that would have ended poorly because we were traveling north on I-5 doing 65 miles, 70 miles an hour. This could have been really, really bad. We were very fortunate that um, America's Tire warrantied that damage even though it was nothing but our fault. So we were able to get that tire replaced free of charge from America's Tire, shout out to them. Great customer service. They took care of it, mounted it, did everything on the spot and fit us in with no um, appointment. It was great. We spent the next day, about a half a day, running around Kent, Washington, trying to find an RV dealership that could get us in. Well, we all know it's not gonna happen, right? You cannot get in on short notice in Kent, Washington to any of the RV dealers. It was terrible. Uh, they were polite, but the bottom line was, wasn't gonna happen. They said they could get us in in about four to five weeks. We're in the middle of a move to Alaska. We are planning on being home in four to five days, not four to five weeks. Go to a local suspension shop, try other dealerships, no luck. So finally, we go back to the trailer for the night because we're frustrated and we need to think this through. Like, what do we do next? So I'm very mechanically inclined, very capable of doing this work on my own. I said, Martha, let's just look at it. Go back to the suspension shop, talk to them and we find out that the suspension shop has in stock the Moride heavy duty shackle kit with the greasable wet bolts and the brass um, fittings. So we buy that. They tell us they could get the springs within two to three days, we order that. Next step, Home Depot. We run over to Home Depot and buy all the tools we need in order to do the maintenance on the trailers. I spent about as much money buying the tools to do the work as I would have on a um, mobile RV tech. Problem with the mobile RV techs, the local ones weren't willing to do suspension work. So we buy the stuff, we wait the extra three days, the parts come in. Um, I'm still working full time at this point. I'm a remote worker because of COVID. So during the day, I work my eight hour shift. At the end of the day, I go out and I spend four hours every evening and I do suspension work. I do that for the next three to four days. And then finally, I'd reached a point where I really had to just get in there and finish it. So I took a day off from work and spent those eight hours rebuilding the suspension with Martha's help. When he takes time off work, he's still working. Yeah, it, it, that is a absolute fact. I was taking conference calls that were urgent underneath the trailer while just filthy in grease and the best part was my work was uh although supposed to be off it continued good thing you had a lovely assistant right now one thing is martha and i made the best of the trip you'll see in the pictures callie was great although she was always underfoot wanting to know what dad was doing crawling around on the ground underneath the trailer thought it was a game right she's like i want to play we took her to the store with us to collect the parts we walked her daily like two or three times a day and the Kent Washington Journey KOA were great. We had a one night stay booked. And I, when I went in that next morning and told the, um, the manager that was working there, hey, this is what's going on. She was able to book us out for the entire week and say, no problem, stay right where you're at. She was completely okay with us actually rebuilding the entire suspension of our trailer. We became quite the spectacle of the park while we were doing it. Um, we actually had a couple different campers come up to and ask if we were mobile mechanics and if we were willing to do work. I had a guy directly across from me in a class A ask if I would change his oil. Um, I was flattered, I appreciated, I obviously had to decline because I had to rebuild the suspension to get my butt back to Alaska. We decided to do the upgraded suspension with the shackles and the brass fittings and the greasable bolts because we wanted to have something that was better than what the factory is and then one of the things you can see in these pictures as you look at it if you look closely the shackles that were on there obviously due to the horrible shape of our springs the, sh the shackle bolts had started to bore bigger holes in the shackles which created slop in the suspension that needs to be checked that's something that is a wearable item that you should definitely look at if you have a travel trailer or heck even a fifth wheel keep an eye on your shackle bolts keep an eye on your springs 
every time you stop for gas, stick your head under the trailer, look at your suspension, look at your shackle bolts, look at your springs, pay attention to your lug nuts, check the tread on your tire, touch your tires, make sure they're not too hot. Temperature will blow a tire out faster than almost anything. So if it's under pressure and it gets too hot, that's usually what causes failure. So the whole point behind this video is, as we mentioned in the beginning, don't be that guy. This whole problem started because I didn't do the research to figure out exactly how much I can load in my trailer. Martha didn't do the research because she trusted me and my judgment and I said, go for it, load up four months worth of stuff and she did. No harm, no foul, not her fault. But know your capacities, weigh your trailer, walk around constantly and make sure that everything's okay. Check all your connection points, check your trailer hitch. Do a much, much more thorough inspection of your rig than what I did. We got off extremely lucky. When you see how bad the suspension was on this as the pictures go by, you'll understand that we were one spring away from realistically flipping our trailer on the freeway because if that one spring would have went, the entire axles would have bound up underneath us. When our springs, our rear springs broke and the axle sat on the frame, it actually ripped the brakes out of our trailer. Now, I was driving a three quarter ton diesel and I didn't realize that it had actually ripped the brakes out of it and it was stopping fine. My truck was a very big truck for a, a fairly lightweight trailer, so I didn't notice that. Again, something that if I would have had to do an emergency stop, I wouldn't have been able to do it nearly as well as I should have because of failure. We are extremely lucky that we were in a safe area. When this happened, we were so close to the K-Way. So that's why Chris didn't stop and look, and normally he does. And this is what we've learned over the last couple years with our travel trailer. Uh, we have our checklist now. We both go over the vehicles and double check everything. We wanna make sure we're safe. Yeah, actually after this happened, I downloaded a checklist app, which I'll have Martha link in the description and we'll put it in the video. Um, we're not associated with it at all. Just something easy that we found that we were able to track and check with the checklist. Um, it's really easy to get in a hurry. And you know, inevitably in life, when you're in a hurry, you make mistakes, you miss things. So I um, highly encourage you to use a checklist, especially when you're looking around at wearable items on your travel trailer or your fifth wheel, heck, even your class A, right? One little nugget of information, if you do find yourself in a predicament where you have to change out a suspension or do something like this, most auto parts stores allow you to rent tools for free. Uh, one of the main tools that I had to rent was actually a ball joint uh, compression tool. Looks like a gigantic C-clamp and I was able to use that to press in the bolts for the uh, hangers into the frame of the trailer and through the actual springs of the uh, suspension. It gave us a great dry run for our full-time adventure, right? When things go bad, how do you react? That's so much of life is not necessarily that things won't go wrong, it's how you react to the things that do go wrong, when it goes wrong. We just made the best of it. We're gonna barbecue, we explored Kent Washington. We're gonna do what we need to do to get back on the road and to continue our adventure. And our adventure in this particular case was to get back home to Alaska. So fast forward about a month and we're back home for a little while at this point. And we decided that I wanted to finish the upgrade on the trailer suspension. You'll see that I went from the factory uh, equalizer in the middle, which is the triangle looking piece to a Equiflex and that has rubber bushings in it makes for a much more uh, stable ride and a little bit more cushioning is definitely considered a suspension upgrade so between the heavy-duty shackles the greasable kit and the uh, brass bushings then we put the equalizer on it made a world of difference on the trailer one last thing I decided to do which don't know if it made any difference or not but it definitely didn't hurt was I installed super springs that's those blue spring uh, foam looking things that you see it right at the center of my axle that's in between my leaf springs. When it was all said and done, the suspension was far more robust than what we started with from the factory. We only used it a couple more times and as Murphy would have it, then we would turn around and sold the trailer. So the new owners got an amazing upgraded suspension with a uh, top of the line components that are far more user friendly and maintenanceable. So they should never have a problem that we did because I also warned them, 
don't overload your, overload your trailer or be that guy. Thanks for watching everyone. I hope this was an informative video and gives you a little bit of insight on what you should do and definitely not do when it comes to the travel trailer. I can't stress enough, get the weights, know the uh, axle capacities and be mindful of the jokes that we all hear on Facebook on the uh, RV communities about the tow police. You know, sometimes there's some very good information in there that they're trying to save you the headaches that we went through. So again, thank you for your time. Thanks for watching. Have a great day.